friends! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I have noticed a few new faces recently, so if you're joining us for the first time, welcome! I'm so glad that you're here. You may be noticing a new pattern emerging in these voiceover vlog videos. I'm still insanely busy at the moment and feeling a bit burnt out if I'm being honest. I just don't have the energy to sit down and talk to a camera even for a few minutes, but that doesn't mean I can't share a chill, cozy day preparing for the holidays with you all. I love getting packages in the mail, even when they're not for me. This order from Thriftbooks is 80% gifts for other people, although I did spoil myself a little bit and got myself a copy of Green Glass House, which is one of my new favorite Christmas reads. And of course, it's always a nice surprise when someone else sends you a package you weren't expecting, like this one from my host family back in Ireland that contained a beautifully wrapped Christmas gift and some artwork that the kids had done for me, so that was a really lovely way to start off my day. A huge part of preparing for the holidays is baking, specifically baking cookies. I used to go to a cookie swap every year and it was always so much fun. And I think I found a new recipe to add to my perennial arsenal this year. I made these really fantastic spicy Mexican hot chocolate cookies with cinnamon, cayenne, red pepper, and lots and lots and lots of chocolate. They were just the right amount of spicy and sweet and they were so good. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. When it comes to gift wrapping, I really enjoy picking a certain aesthetic and having all of my gifts match each other within that aesthetic when wrapped. The past few years, it's been just simple, rustic, uh, brown paper and twine. Although I do change up the design on the two from tag year to year. Some people think it's a little over the top, but I just like to go that extra mile and make sure everything is wrapped nicely. So I took some time to do that while listening to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It is one of my favorite Christmas stories and just a really beloved tradition. And along with my spicy hot chocolate cookies, it just wouldn't be an Italian Christmas if I wasn't making biscotti, at least not the way my family does it. 
Unfortunately, this year I won't be able to enjoy my aunt's pizzelle, but we're still having our Feast of the Seven Fishes. We have panettone galore, and there's nothing stopping me from making cranberry biscotti just like I have every December for the past 10 years. A hot chocolate person myself but these are perfect for dipping in a cup of cocoa or coffee espresso or even a cup of tea I've been really enjoying mysteries this holiday season murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie is one of my absolute favorite winter reads and as I mentioned before, Green Glass House by Kate Milford has found a place on my shelf and in my heart as a new Christmas staple. This weekend, I was lucky enough to have a few library holds come in, Ghosts of Green Glass House, which is the sequel to Green Glass House, and Murder at an Irish Christmas, which is pretty much everything I ever want from a Christmas novel, ever. Another Christmas staple in my house is mulled wine or glühwein. My family isn't even a little bit Scandinavian, but we've adopted this traditional German beverage along with Stollen as part of our own Christmas tradition. In my opinion, it is the best beverage for curling up with a wintertime murder mystery. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this festive winter day. Whether you celebrate Christmas or not, I hope you're all having a safe and happy holiday season wherever you are. I probably won't be back on here until the new year, but until then, stay safe everyone and I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Peace out Brussels sprouts. I love you, baby, baby.